Good morning, everyone. I'm just getting ready for the day. How are you all doing? I um, wanted to make this video because I have spoken about it quite a lot, just in vlogs, and I haven't gone into detail. Um, and I wanna speak about health anxiety and my experience with it. I asked some questions on Instagram, just so that you could have your input. So I thought I'd get ready with you, answer some questions, uh, in case any of you have gone through it because I feel like there's a lot of conversation online about depression, eating disorders, anxiety in general, uh, lots of mental health disorders but I don't see a huge conversation happening about health anxiety and for me personally it was extremely debilitating and it kind of led to me having a bit of a mental breakdown and I don't use that term loosely because in hindsight I look back and I think it was a mental breakdown for me because my world turned upside down when this this happened and I felt like I was going crazy. And I like talking about my mental health because I know that so many of you go through similar things and I know that if I heard someone make a video about this at the time, it would have just given me that reassurance. So I wanna be that person. And yeah, it's gonna be difficult because it's not something that I'm like recovered from, that I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have no, you know, I have no health anxiety now because it has come back a little bit recently because I've been going through a few sort of life stresses. And that is the reality, unfortunately, of mental health that it doesn't just go away. Sorry, I'm just gonna move you here because of lighting. Yeah, it doesn't just go away and then that's it. In my experience with any mental health problems I faced, you learn how to cope with it and life stresses can help it come or go and you kind of learn how to speak to yourself and how to I don't know how to challenge those thoughts and how to deal with the situation that's happening I will obviously be talking about mental health in this video so content warning um, if that's not for you and you're going to find that triggering then don't watch this video and stay tuned for the next cozy relaxing vlog but I thought I just yeah let's get into the question so that it can prompt me uh, I know that there was one. Oh gosh, there's loads. Okay, so first let's define what health anxiety is because maybe some of you are watching this out of curiosity and someone did say, what is it? Um, so I'm gonna go on the NHS website and I'm gonna read it to you. So health anxiety is when you spend so much time worrying you're ill or about getting ill that it starts to take over your life. It's related to obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. You may have health anxiety if you constantly worry about your health frequently check your body for signs of illness, such as lumps, tingling, or pain, are always asking people for reassurance that you're not ill, worry that a doctor or medical test may have missed something, obsessively look at health information on the internet or in the media, avoid anything to do with serious illness, such as medical TV programs, and act as if you are ill, for example, avoiding physical activities. Anxiety itself can cause symptoms like headaches or a racing heartbeat, and you may mistake these for signs of illness. Okay, so that is the NHS information and I'll leave a link to that if you think that you're dealing with this. And I'd really recommend if you are dealing with those symptoms that you book in a phone call with your doctor and you go through the right process of seeking therapy because that's what I did. And it is really important, specifically CBT therapy because that is something that helps with um, anxiety and OCD compulsive behaviours. It can help you basically target the problem and understand what's happening and break it down so you know what to do next time. Um, you can do this through the NHS or you can do it privately. I did it privately because there is a wait list with the NHS and I think it was about 40 pounds or 50 pounds per session, just for your information if you want to do it privately and you can afford to. Uh, and I think I had about six sessions specifically for health anxiety. So yeah, I'm gonna start with my um, SPF actually. I will get ready whilst I'm doing this. This is the beauty of Joseon. SPF. I love this stuff. I'll link it. I have a discount code, I think, on iHerb if you want to grab it. It's great because it's not got oxybenzone or anything in there. Um, so yeah, my experience with health anxiety was exactly those things. I had all of those symptoms and it started around the pandemic. Um, I've always been an anxious person, so it's not like, you know, during the pandemic out of nowhere, suddenly I was being a hypochondriac about my health. I've always worried about my health. I've always worried about my family's health. And if I actually look back, it's definitely an anxiety I had growing up. 
I would always be scared that my parents would be ill or would get in a car accident or something. Um, but I was never, I don't know, I don't know that I have too many memories of me worrying too long about me being ill beyond the kind of normal amount that everyone does. However, I did experience an eating disorder. I experienced bulimia and then orthorexia. And I actually look back and I think that a lot of my orthorexia did have a lot of similarities now to my health anxiety. So lots of my kind of obsessive behaviors with food were to do with being the healthiest I could be. And I look back and think that kind of control, that definitely was a precursor for my health anxiety. I'm gonna use the Typology Tinted Serum Type 2 Light. It's a bit dark for me, but oh well. It started during the pandemic. And I think that this was something I noticed from your comments when I mentioned this in another video, that lots of you developed health anxiety or anxiety disorder in general during the pandemic. It was such a difficult time for so many of us. And for me, I just found it extremely stressful seeing, um, you know, all the news about everything that was happening. And I was so terrified about getting ill and dying. And I was so terrified about my family getting ill and dying. That's, I think, what started it because nobody knew. And it was kind of like a time in our lives where it was a little bit like someone in your life could die, you could die, and that's it. And that's what's happening now. And that is extremely scary for all of us. And I think probably if, even if you don't have health anxiety, obviously you can relate because we all went through that, um, that fear and that, that kind of worry. But I think for me, it became something that took over my life. I had to take time off work and I became hysterical over it. Like I could not, I could not chill out. I was every morning checking the news. I was becoming really obsessive with looking at data and information about COVID, being extremely obsessive about cleaning everything. I wouldn't leave the house. Um, Alex did all the food shops. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I took like a month off work at some point because it all became too much. And I was just, drinking and binge eating and just watching television and my whole world kind of turned upside down at that time. Then I think it got to the point where I was just every single day wake, waking up so terrified. Oh yeah, this is the, um, this is weird to do it. <laughs> Get ready with me and talk about something so intense. I thought this was a good idea, but it's kind of weird. Um, Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer. Um, yeah, and then I was so fed up of waking up terrified every single day that I sought therapy. I went to talking therapy and at the time I didn't know that I had health anxiety. I just thought I had like, uh, you know, generalized anxiety disorder and I've always been an anxious person. I've had anxiety forever, but it just got worse and worse. And my heart rate was extremely high every single day. When I look back, I think that I actually did ring the doctor a couple times about a few symptoms I was experiencing to do with my digestion and to do with my breathing. And I remember specifically a time going on a walk with Roxy and my heart rate was like 140 and I was just going on a walk and I rang my dad and I was so scared and I was like, what's going on? And, you know, he had to talk me out of it and be like, Maddie, you know, you're really stressed, like speak to the doctor and but I'm sure you're fine. And, you know, my mum doing the same and I was just bothering everyone around me with all these fears and all these worries. And I did speak to um, a doctor at that point, but I think I first went to therapy. It's really hard for me to remember as well because I don't have the best memory. And I think also when you go through a hard time, your brain blocks things out. So I might be getting the timeline of this a bit wrong, but the gist is there. Uh, yeah, I went to therapy. I'd had talking therapy to try and understand where the anxiety was lying. It really helped to kind of talk through like my experiences with my childhood, my experiences with my relationships and maybe where my anxiety began. And I found that really useful just to have somebody to listen to me and also to kind of help me understand how our brains work. And she would kind of give me examples of relationship structures or different things that I would reflect on that would be so, so helpful for me. Um, but yeah, this is when I sort of started obsessively contacting like doctors. I think I saw like three or four different doctors during this time because the annoying thing about anxiety and like that NHS information set said, you develop symptoms when you get stressed. So I developed really bad shortness of breath and um, I couldn't take a full breath without me kind of wheezing at the end. And I had have chest pain, I had bad digestion, all these things. So I saw loads of doctors, I had an ECG, I had blood tests. I had an asthma, like, um, you know, lung capacity thing where you breathe into it. 
and everything came back completely fine. My ECG was healthy, my blood tests were good. I think I had two blood tests at the time because I was I did that exact thing that the NHS said. I didn't believe that the blood tests were accurate. I was convinced that there was something wrong. And I even asked for the doctor to get another doctor to look at the blood tests, which they did. They were all actually really, I had a really positive experience with all of the doctors I spoke to who were really kind and really understanding of the fact that I was extremely stressed um, by all of this. And they were so gentle with listening to me and hearing me out, which I'm very grateful for. Yeah, I asked them, I said, could you get another doctor just to look at the blood tests because I'm just worried because I do have symptoms. And they, they did that for me. And I spoke with a different doctor um, who confirmed that everything was healthy. And I explained, that, oh, I've been vegan for this many years. Is it to do with that? Or, you know, I got paranoid. But yeah, my lung capacity, she even said it's like better than my, what my age should be. So that was definitely nothing to worry about. It got it got a bit better as I was having therapy. And then um, I got to the point in therapy that I realized that my health anxiety was kind of taking over any of the kind of, I guess, worry about general things or like relationships I was experiencing. And so I felt that talking therapy wasn't the path. And I went in and had CBT therapy which was really, really helpful. I don't love CBT. I find it quite cold because it's not someone listening to you. It's someone kind of telling you what to do and teaching you. And so I found that a bit tricky that I would be sitting in therapy telling someone all my thoughts and feelings and fears without that kind of initial, I guess, like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but in talking therapy, they kind of, you open up to them and it takes a minute and you kind of feel more comfortable. With CBT, it's a bit more like, okay, so what are you afraid of? And then, um, okay, so what are you afraid happens then? And it's a bit like, oh, but you know, in a way that's <laughs> probably quite good really to really get down to the nitty gritty. So I had CBT. I realize I'm not answering questions, but I thought I'd give you an overview. Um, yeah, I had CBT and that basically gave you a tool, toolkit of how to deal with things. So for example, one of my obsession, my, one of my compulsions was to Google things if I felt a symptom. And so I, my homework would be to go home and challenge that. So if I felt a symptom, I would try not to Google it. And I would diary or journal about this experience and how it made me feel. And if I did Google it, I would also journal how that made me feel. Because the funny thing is that when you actually do the thing that you're you think it's going to make you feel better it actually makes you feel worse i don't think i've ever googled one of my symptoms and thought oh i feel better now like it doesn't work that way even though you think it will um so i had that and at the end of that i still felt crazy <laughs> unfortunately i felt like i had a, a toolkit for sure on my uh health anxiety and how to kind of i guess deal with it when it came up but I still was like so stressed every day my like cortisol levels I could just feel my energy was so just erratic and I think a period of time went by where I was feeling a bit better and then and then I was like Do you know what I'm just fed up of this I want to get to the bottom of what's going on with me and that's when I decided to speak to a psychologist because I really wanted to kind of understand and rule out anything else like any other I don't know problems and I found that very helpful. We um, went through a lot of different things and dug into my childhood and trauma. I even tried, I'll put on it, what it is on screen, but the therapy where you um, do lots of movement with your fingers. And that didn't work on me. I just completely, de like, um, what's the word? Where you switch off. I, I just completely switched off and I didn't even know that was a thing either. She told me about, she said, you, um, you do this thing. Gosh, I'm good at words, aren't I? Is it depersonalization? No. We well, use zone out basically. It's like a coping mechanism. And I do do that a lot. Ooh. And I didn't realize that that's something I did. Oh, did I tell you what I was using? Oh, I didn't, did I? So I used the RMS Beauty Living Luminizer and Lip to Cheek. Um, I'm gonna hurry this up because I've not answered any questions. But yeah, I saw her for a while, tried different therapies, tried to get to the bottom of it. And um, it really did help to understand like lots of the things in my life. Though I do still, um, I feel like I'd, it may be unsatisfying for you to share that I do still feel like this is slightly open-ended. I'm cautious about like sharing too much of my life, my personal things online, because I know people can use it against you. But I'm I'm basically just in a kind of position where I had all the, that therapy and I understand a lot more about myself, but there's, there's something I really want to kind of look into a little bit more in the future. And when I do, I'll share that online. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my experience.
in a nutshell. So let's get into the questions. And yeah, I, I still definitely experience um, health anxiety now. How do you rein in spiraling, anxi spiraling anxiety caused by something you read or seen on social media? Um, this is the typology lip oil in ruby red, by the way. So this is one of the things I struggle with. I will just go on my social media because obviously I work online. I will see a post of somebody being ill, you know, a dedication, someone's passed away. And I end up going down a rabbit hole, <laughs> clicking on it, looking into their symptoms, trying to figure out what they've been through and believing then that I have what they have or I could have what they have or because they're my age, I could end up like that. And that's not a way to live your life. Um, because I think, unfortunately, if we didn't have social media, we, we wouldn't necessarily know about these things. You know, in your kind of vicinity, you will experience people who have illnesses in your life, but not to the degree that you see on social media. It's everywhere, obviously, because everyone's sharing everything. And so it does create a very anxious atmosphere. But if you are doing that, if whatever it is that's making you feel anxious, then the thing that I learned in CBT was to challenge that, like I said before. So if you, if one of your compulsions is to look at it and to, um, you know, to scroll and look, you have to challenge it and keep a journal. So you've recognised that's something that makes your anxiety worse. So for the next week, try and not um, either click on that thing that you know will make you anxious or not scroll on your phone before bed or whatever it is that you're doing that you know makes you feel anxious when it comes to social media and journal and if you do it um journal about that experience too and say i i clicked on it i was scrolling i was you know looking at stuff i shouldn't have and it made me feel like this and it really does help to reflect and just challenge one thing don't overwhelm yourself and um i found that process really really helpful and i still maintain those um like challenges i really challenge myself still to this day to not google things like i'm not allowed basically i don't google things and i really try i do struggle with this one in particular to not seek reassurance from my family and alex or friends instead tell them how i'm feeling difficult because it can slip into the other one but i do try and just say oh i'm just feeling really anxious i've got health anxiety today and talk about that experience over going oh my gosh but i've had this symptom and i'm worried about it that's that's what I try to do. Okay, putting off getting labs done like blood work due to health anxiety, any advice? Yeah, this is really hard because obviously health anxiety is partly, I guess, stopped by the fear of you being ill. And you, you, you have this kind of feeling, I've trying to explain this to Alex the other day, that it's this like feeling of you kind of feel a bit crazy because when you have a symptom, you're like, oh, I really probably should go to the doctor because somebody else would, but I don't want to because that would be really scary if it is something. So you kind of get trapped. Um, and I think my advice on that is to speak to a family member or a friend or just speak to your doctor and just say, hey, I have health anxiety. I am worried about this thing and I want to get blood work done because of it. Is it worth doing blood work or is it not? What is your professional advice? And is there a way that I can go through this experience without feeling so anxious? And if they say, yes, it's worth getting blood work done. There's nothing to worry about. It's very standard. They can hopefully give you some sort of reassurance. Maybe there's a way that um, they can reassure you when you'll receive the blood work. During that time, make sure you have lots of like support from friends and family to keep yourself busy because it's really not worth putting off those sorts of things. You want to you wanna make sure that you're not kind of like not taking care of yourself because of your anxiety, because it's very unlikely that there's anything wrong with you and you're probably fine and it's better to know. If there was something going on with your body that, that the doctor can then help you with and diagnose and give you treatment for and give you medication for, like you have to kind of rationalize it and go, if I did have this illness, it's unlikely to be some horrible thing. It's more likely to just be something simple that I can get medication for and then I can get better um, and try and remind yourself of that and bring yourself back down to reality. But how do you deal with knowing the fact that so many things can trigger you, trigger you? Like, how do you fully relax? So I do really struggle with fully relaxing, but there are certain things I have in my kind of like toolkit that I know make me feel better. And unfortunately, when your health or your mental health is poor, those things go out the window because you struggle to even shower. So I have to actively remind myself to do those things. So for example, I have been feeling very stressed recently. So I have um, let exercise go completely out the window and things like, you know, not going on my phone at night or reading or going on long walks. Lots of those things have left my routine, unfortunately, due to poor mental health. So I have to have sort of like a check-in and what I would recommend is writing down um, like a perfect morning or a perfect evening 
and be realistic and say, what would be my dream morning? Would it be having a cup of coffee with some classical music? Would it be going for a long walk? Reading my book, having a phone call with a friend, um, watching my favorite TV show with a delicious breakfast. Write that down, that really dreamy, cozy, lovely morning or evening or day routine and try and focus on doing that because that is your time in the day that you can relax and it will be very difficult at first. You will do it and you will feel like, I don't feel relaxed, I feel really stressed, but you have to persevere. Um, and I, I, this morning, for example, I did Pilates, I woke up, I read my book, I actually just sat there with a cup of tea, I didn't have coffee. You know, there are simple things that we all know that are good for us. Good food, getting outdoors, speaking to friends and family, spending time with friends and family, um, reading books, meditating. We know the things that make us feel relaxed. So just dedicate time to those things. And um, if you know that so many things can trigger you, then it's worth speaking to a therapist about those triggers, where they come from, so you can understand them better and then work on them. That would be my best recommendation. How do you differentiate between anxiety versus health anxiety? So my understanding is health anxiety is a bit more like OCD. So it's like an obsessive compulsive problem, um, which is similar to eating disorders because you have a, a, an obsession, i.e. losing weight. And then the compulsion is to not eat or to um, binge eat or be sick or whatever. And it's the same with health anxiety. You have a fear that you're ill. So you have a compulsion to Google it, to fantasize about it, to ask for reassurance, to go to the doctors, etc. Um, whereas anxiety, like generalised anxiety, which I also deal with, um, is this kind of general sense of feeling stressed. Like, so you wake up and you're really anxious and you're afraid that like you have this kind of higher f fight or flight level. Most people are here and you're up here all the time. So like anything bad happens in your day and you sort of tip over and you get terrified. That's, I think, what general anxiety is for me anyway. So the smallest thing can make you feel really anxious, you know, just going out for the day or um, having to meet a deadline for work that can be enough to tip you over the edge with anxiety and you can wake up feeling very stressed. So some people are asking whether I have anxiety about my family too. I do, most of my health anxiety is about me because I feel the symptoms and then I worry, but I also do worry about my family and friends too, but not to the same level of obsession. I don't know why that is. I My biggest fear is that my family and friends are gonna get ill and I do wake up and it's sometimes the first thing I think about, but um, most of my kind of really spiraling fear is about me being ill. How having someone sick around you can trigger it. I totally understand this is hard, but this is like part of life. So I think one of my um, experiences is um, one of my friends from school, um, she's one of my best friends, best friend, and um, we went to school together and I've been able to see her a few times recently, which has been so lovely. She got very ill recently um, and that was really, like, I guess, triggering for me. Um, obviously, she's going through this horrible diagnosis and experience at my age, and when I found out about it, it was really scary to, to know that somebody else was diagnosed with something so scary, and, you know, made me think, oh gosh, that could happen to me, and I was so worried for her, and it was just, yeah, it's really triggering. Um, and I spoke about this in therapy as well, and it's it's one of those things that you have to, you have to kind of separate the fact that just because something's happening to someone else doesn't mean it's happening to you. And I hate to say it, but you have to kind of just say it's life. Unfortunately, it is life. But one of the things that we went through, I think, in CBT was that, you know, if, if the eventuality happened that your fear came true and you did get ill, what are you afraid of? Like, what what is the fear there? And trying to unearth what that fear is. And for, for me, it was kind of like going down the rabbit hole of like, are you afraid of dying? Are you afraid of like being in hospital? Are you afraid of doctors? What is the fear? And it's hard to put your sort of finger on it, but I suppose for me, it was the fear of kind of feeling like you're a burden or feeling like you're, that's it. And you, you don't know, you know, you don't know how, it's like this kind of fear of not having control over the situation. And understanding where the fear comes from can really help separate when other people are sick around you and understand that that's a really unfortunate thing but hopefully they're getting treatment hopefully they're going to do better and you just can be there to support them and it doesn't need to be something that triggers you so I think if there's any trigger in any capacity if you're watching this if you don't have health anxiety try and understand where that trigger is coming from and therefore it can help you handle it um, and separate the two 
How did it affect your relationship with friends and family husband? So I think it was really difficult for Alex because obviously he will experience a lot of the stress that I have onto him and he also deals with anxiety, but he also understands because of his anxieties and his worries. Uh, that's why I sought therapy, to be honest with you. One of my main motivators was so that I didn't have to um, bother my family and friends with it anymore because I was so fed up of stressing them out. I think that's important to recognise when you have a problem to seek help because it's your responsibility to look after yourself and make sure that you're empowering yourself to look after yourself um, by getting professional help because sometimes you might be going around in circles speaking to somebody who isn't a professional who doesn't know how to help you. You may be speaking with someone and getting in arguments. Like definitely sometimes if I was having a panic attack over something, Alex had no idea how to help me when I was having a panic attack and that sometimes would make it worse because I would know my head I really want him to do this, I want him to comfort me, but he was kind of like worried or scared or a bit like, I don't really know what to do. Um, and that's because he's he's also anxious and some people just find that really difficult. So it definitely impacted people around me because not everyone knows how to deal with it. And I'm probably not very fun to be around if I'm sitting there really anxious and worrying about everything. And I, I definitely think I probably socialized a lot less. It was a, a moment for me to realize that, yeah, this is impacting other people. So I really need to get to the bottom of this and fix it. Have you had moments when the tiniest health issue put you in panic mode? I'm dealing with it in therapy. 100%, that's literally my entire story in life. I haven't been diagnosed with anything serious. All of them have, have been symptoms that probably are likely caused by stress or maybe drinking too much or binge eating or whatever when I was stressed. And they have been able to go away with me looking after myself and changing my lifestyle. But if you're dealing with it in therapy, then you just have to keep going with it and keep separating the two and you you will get out of the place where you're in panic mode. It's all about bringing your kind of like cortisol and your energy down to a level where you can tolerate a small problem. How to support someone with health anxiety? That's a really good question. So if you know someone who has health anxiety, my best advice is to listen to them when they are struggling, um, but maybe challenge them if they are ringing you and saying, I'm so f afraid that I'm ill listen to them and say, oh, why do you feel that way? And kind of just, instead of reassuring them, ask them what they're feeling and where it's come from and, and just be that kind of ear and just give them prompts to keep telling you how they feel. Give them prompts to say, you know, why why is it that you're feeling that way? What, what is it that you're, you're worried about? And then um, try and guide them in the direction of speaking with a professional, with a doctor, with a therapist. And um, also there are, I'm pretty sure that there are CBT, um, like spread, uh, worksheets that you can probably download online that kind of go through that process of like what the fear is, what the compulsions are and how to break it down. So that could be something that you could say, oh, I, why don't you have a look into CBT and doing some of the worksheets for that. But just to be honest, just be there for them and listen to them and help them feel like they've got someone because knowing that if I'm really panicking and I'm really scared, I can ring my mum or I can speak to Alex. That really helps me because it makes me think, okay, they're gonna be there to listen and probably in the early days they would reassure me a lot because that's what I was after. Um, but what what I personally think now is help, more helpful is just for them to just listen and not obsessively reassure me, but just say, it's okay. Um, maybe you could speak to a therapist or you could speak to a doctor about the anxieties you're having and go from there because it doesn't have to be about the symptom then. You know, if you're going to the doctor, you're saying, oh, I'm really worried about this symptom then it might be something that they can also be saying, well, also I have health anxiety and talk to the doctor about that too. How to differentiate between a valid health concern and not a valid one, how to get out of the spiral. This is something I really struggle with. I've been having health anxiety recently um, over certain symptoms I've been having and it's really difficult for me to know what is a valid health concern and what isn't. And my advice, and this is something I'm pretty sure my therapist told me to do, is to, if you are having a symptom, write down the symptom every day for two weeks, if you are experiencing it and when, and see if it's anywhere connected with anxiety. Write that down when you have it and what was going on at the time. Maybe you were about to go into a meeting or maybe you'd had a conversation or an argument with somebody, or maybe you were, before you left the house and you were nervous about going out, and see if it connects to your anxiety, or maybe it's just happening generally through the day and it doesn't connect to your anxiety and it is a bit random. And doing that can, kind of alleviate some stress in a way because most of the time when I've done this it's been very much always around the times of anxiety when I'm feeling stressed but in the very occasions when it hasn't been it's just been there I've gone to the doctor and then they have done the process of taking care of me because that is important too and it's been fine um, and I've got I either got you know medication for it or it's gone away that's that's my best 
advice to you to differentiate. If it's been two weeks and you're having a symptom that's um, persisting, speak to a doctor. That's what people recommend to do and just kind of rationalize it. Bring it down back to reality that you're probably not dying and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> And it's probably something little that lots of people have and the doctor can just give you some antibiotics or medication or whatever for. My battery is flashing at me, so I want to round this up and um, just remind you that if you are dealing with health anxiety, depression, anxiety, any mental health problems, please speak to your doctor. Please seek therapy. Um, don't be afraid. Speak to someone you know because it's likely that they have been through something similar. I don't know a single person in my life who hasn't experienced some form of mental health problem at some point, panic attacks, anxieties, depression, just speak with somebody. It's gonna be okay and it's really important that you have support because this is something that it does is enough to make you feel crazy. For me personally, it made me go so insane in my own head um, that I felt like I was losing who, any sense of who I was and I had a mental breakdown with it because I was having daily panic attacks. I was just spiraling. I was afraid all day, every day, constantly, and that's no way to live. Seek help, seek therapy, and start taking care of yourself. If you have health anxiety, what more could you do? What more motivation would you need to wake up every day and do the things we all know that make us feel good? Meditate, do yoga, get outside, eat well, you know, relax, read a book, spend time with family, like use your health anxiety right now to like motivate you to just look after yourself and practice self-care because that is gonna get you on the path to recovery and therapy and medication even can be a part of that. Um, just don't do it alone and don't um, experience this spiraling, crazy, all encompassing, debilitating, horrible experience by yourself because I understand and it sucks. It really sucks. I still have issues to this day, but I know how to not let it get to that level. Um, I mean, I say this, it's hard. It's very hard. I'm not going to say it's not hard, which is why I'm trying to go down another route at the minute. I'm probably going to go back to therapy and try and figure something out, maybe medication. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all doing okay. I'll leave a link to different resources. Um, websites where you can find local therapists. BetterHelp is, is an online therapy service. Um, and if you are dealing with anything, please, please, please 